Welcome back, brave viewers, to the Wiccan Anvil, a fortress that has not just endured but thrived in the recent years of relentless war. A few years have passed since its founding, and the dwarves within these stone halls have transformed it into a formidable stronghold. The Wicked Anvil is no longer just a forward base for the Mountain Home, it is a symbol of defiance against the goblins of the maligning monster. In these years of blood and battle, the fortress has fully committed to the war effort, launching raids and fending off attacks from goblin hordes. Within the caverns, our blacksmiths work tirelessly, forging new iron and steel armor and weapons. But yet the goblins weren't the only threat. From the depths of the caverns below, a strange cave dwellers have emerged as an unsuspected foe. Yet through all the chaos, the Wicked Anvil has stood strong. Its dwarves now more united and battle-hardened than ever. Join us as we dive into the story of how this fortress has become a beacon of hope and strength for our mountain home. The war rages on, but the Wicked Anvil is ready for whatever comes next. Early summer of the year 124, our guild of planters came and requested a guild hall so that they may teach some of the younger dwarves, and also dwarves who don't have a planter skill, their craft. The manager decided this would be a great idea, and he installed an artifact tower cap chair that was built by one of the dwarves here in the Wicked Anvil. This gave the room the value to become a guild hall. With our population absolutely exploding, new guilds, new temples were being constructed, but also we needed to construct new bedrooms. So, 31 new bedrooms were built just above our main floors. While bedroom construction was going on down in the caverns, the mountain homes arrived with their autumn trade caravan. We traded them for lots of food, lots of surface plants, and also a few barrels of fish. They also brought a piece of literature, the student's minerals, which we happily took for future scribes to read and copy. We traded them a lot of finished goods and they profited over 10,000 in value. Just a few levels below where the trading was going on, a new barracks was being established. This time for the new militia squad, the Thundering Spears. This is where they will train for the upcoming war against the goblins of the maligning monster. Now to start producing armor and weapons for the war, we needed more iron, which we found in our main floors of our cavern. It was riddled with hematite and magnetite, which is ores for iron. Now this personally got me very excited. A dwarf named Enith, Lorbam Sterus was possessed. She took over a magma forge, meaning we could possibly get an artifact, weapon, or armor. Now, I was really, really hoping that she would pick up some lead. That way, we could create a lead warhammer for our anvil commander, Ezum. If she would use a heavy metal with that kind of density for a warhammer, Ezum would be unstoppable. While this was going on, a forgotten beast, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name at the bottom there was fighting an ambush of cave dwellers. These pesky little creatures had bothered us once before, and it was good to see the forgotten beast tear through them. Remember what I said about lead? Well, that's it. Enith actually picked up some lead. Now we can just kind of hope for, yeah. That's right, she didn't make a god tier weapon. She made a, a thin lead gauntlet. So it'll be used as an artifact to build value in one of our guild halls or temples. Back at the main entrance of the fort, I had realized we had started collecting some seeds. We hadn't really gone to the surface much to collect plants, but somehow we ended up with a ton of seeds from stuff we had cooked. So we walled off a section and put a roof on this little building. We are now going to be able to grow some surface plants for the fortress. Speaking of surface plants, I realized we didn't have a lot of fruit to brew alcohol with, so we went ahead and walled off a handful of trees with a staircase leading down to the main entrance. Now, I didn't put a ceiling on this one because I don't care if things climb in. Our drawbridge is set basically downstream of this, so we can still block off any foes if they decide to climb over this. Now, some of these surface plants did need to be milled, so we built a handful of millstones and some windmills on the surface to power them. I'm sure our dwarves will love this over the manual work of turning the millstones themselves. Our anvil commander, Ezum, decided it was time for a dungeon. With a growing population and plenty of alcohol to go around, it was only a matter of time before crimes were committed. They picked a corner along the wall in the cavern and, and started construction on a new dungeon. Unbeknownst to the dwarves, in their haste they had left small, unnoticed holes in the walls. Gateways to the unknown danger in the cavern beyond. These openings, though seemingly insignificant, became the entry point for a group of 20 cave dwellers. The cave dwellers, with their grotesque forms and savage instincts, were drawn to the scent of the dwarves, sensing an opportunity to strike with this newfound entry. 
Amid the construction, the cave dwellers launched her attack, pouring through the holes in a frenzy. With gnashing teeth and clawed hands, the dwarves were caught off guard. They had little time to react as the cave dwellers descended with ferocity. Chaos erupted as the dwarves struggled to defend themselves, their tools turning from construction implements to weapons of survival. Among the defenders was Domas, known as the Healing Lord in this fortress, one of the original seven dwarves who had settled the Wicked Anvil. Domas was revered for his wisdom and his ability to mend wounds, both physical and spiritual. He had seen the fortress grow from its humble beginnings, and his presence was a source of comfort and strength for the others. Domas struck blow after blow in a desperate struggle, yet the cave dweller's sheer brutality overcame him. With a final, savage swipe, the creature's claws found their mark, and Domas fell, mortally wounded and bleeding out. The surviving dwarves, though victorious in driving off the cave dwellers, were left to mourn their losses. The death of Domas, the healing lord, was a heavy blow to the wicked anvil. He had been more than just a warrior or a healer. He had been a pillar of the community, a living link to the fortress's origins from the mountain home. And just like all other things, he had come to an end. He would be buried in the tombs below, and the dwarves would miss him dearly. Or we could even start the cleanup after the cave dweller ambush. An Etten named Agesh arrived, a giant humanoid, finding her way into her fortress, but little did she know it was the trap hallway. She found herself pierced and cut by her traps below, stone fall traps rolling boulders off of her shoulder and her neck. It did not take long before the Etten had fallen. This allowed us to now focus on burying the victims of the cave dwellers. The following season, after the Etten and the cave dweller incidents, the mountain homes arrived with their trading caravan, which they brought lots of instruments upon hearing of our temples and guild halls that could possibly use them. We sent them home with a profit of 7,000, but before they left, we promoted our mayor, Udil, to the Baroness of the Wicked Anvil. This is a huge sign for the Wicked Anvil, showing the mountain homes support of our fortress and our cause. Now this was very exciting for the fortress, and one of the migrant waves, a high master weaponsmith named Abon showed up. Now Abon was granted the title Warforger. The mountain homes must have known we were in need of a weaponsmith, so they sent Abon, the Warforger, to the fortress to help the war efforts. The Hammerbane Militia Squad and the Anvil Commander Ezum were sent out to raid the Goblin Pits of Open Doom. With a population of roughly 100, our scouts say, our militia was told to stay low, search for any surviving dwarves or loot that you could find. Ezum the Anvil Commander is a legendary fighter and leader, sent from the mountain homes directly to lead the war efforts here at the Wicked Anvil. He alone killed three goblins at Open Doom. They were then immediately sent back, this time stealing some iron armor and an instrument. The raids were a success, but we knew this didn't make a dent into the plans of the war efforts of the mountain home. More would need to be done. Now, what needed to be done was to take out more goblins, and the dwarves of the Wicked Anvil would get their chance. The goblins of the Maligning Monster, enraged by the recent dwarven raid on Spidery Bowels and Open Doom, gathered their forces for a ruthless counterattack on the Wicked Anvil, hauling creatures of war with them, two large trolls. The goblins poured into the trap hallway, triggering the deadly mechanisms that lined the walls and the floor. Serrated blades started spinning, stonefall traps rained down boulders, cutting down scores of goblins as they charged forward. The hallway became a slaughterhouse, but the goblins pressed on. While the goblins fought through the deadly gauntlet, two trolls, massive and unyielding, smashed their way into the newly constructed surface garden. The dwarves did not know that the trolls were able to destroy hatch covers. The trolls descended, rampaging through the area, their enormous hands tearing up the earth and crushing anything beneath its path. Several dwarven civilians caught off guard as they tended the surface crops were brutally killed, their bodies left broken among the trampled plants. The Thunderspear squad received word of the trolls up top. Hearing of the chaos above, they rushed up the stairs from the lower levels, their weapons at the ready. As they emerged from the garden, they were met with the terrifying sight of the trolls in the midst of their destructive frenzy. Without hesitation, the Thunderspears charged. Meanwhile, in the trap hallway, the Hammerbane squad, led by the seasoned Anvil Commander Ezum, awaited the goblins who made it through the deadly traps. The Hammerbane's hardened warriors with a fierce reputation met the goblins head-on as they emerged from the hallway battered and bloodied. The clash was swift and brutal. The Hammerbanes cut down the goblins with practiced precision. 
the goblins already weakened by the trap stood little chance against the seasoned dwarven veterans. Within minutes, the hallway was littered with the goblin corpses, a stench of blood and death heavy in the air. When the last goblin fell, the Hammerbane squad emerged from the hallway to find the Thunder Spears standing over the bodies of the slain trolls. Their victory hard fought, but costly. The loss of six of the ten Thunder Spears was a heavy blow to the fortress. The death toll among the civilians weighed heavily on the survivors. The surface garden, once a symbol of hope and new beginnings, was now a battleground, its soil stained with blood. Though the goblins had been defeated, the cost of victory was steep. The dwarves of the Wicked Anvil knew that the threat from the maligning monster was far from over, and the fortress's defenses would need to be rebuilt and strengthened. The survivors, though bloodied and battered, resolved to continue the fight, honoring the fallen by ensuring that their sacrifice would not be in vain. The Dwarven Fortress of the Wicked Anvil has stood one more year. This fortress will continue to be the spearhead for the war efforts of the Mountain Home. The Goblins of the Maligning Monster must fall. So I do hope you guys are enjoying this series as much as I am. I really appreciate you guys checking this out and all of the support that has come in recently is awesome. I, I truly can't believe that there's, I think we're pushing 1800 right now. It's gone up 100 since the last video or so. Um, I want to say thank you guys so much for everybody who's subscribing to this channel. It's, it is a bit mind boggling to me that people are enjoying this as much as you guys are. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you. Down below in the description, you can find a link tree with a whole bunch of stuff, including some merch. I don't expect anybody to get this, but I put it out there just in case. Uh, I wanted some stuff with my own logo on it, so I went ahead and just made the store. If you want to support me in that way, feel free to. Um, I just want to say thank you in advance, truly. And like I said, I'm a smaller YouTuber, so any likes, comments for ideas or anything you guys want in this fortress, let me know. Um, it helps me out a ton. I, I sit here and try to make up these stories and such. And if you guys wanted to make it easier on me, feel free. All around here, you're going to be seeing a subscribe button, playlist, and another video. Feel free to hit any of those if you'd like, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.